Welcome to the Andrew D'Angelo podcast. Constant Constance. Each week, Andrew, renowned jazz saxophonist and brain cancer survivor, invites us to look at the many worlds of his guests with conversations that cover all the arts, human resilience, a little bit of politics, and a lot of humour. You can't fail to have a fantastic time. Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are here today with Mr. Jakob Bro, the amazing guitarist and good <laughs> friend of mine for 8,000 years. And uh, hey, Jakob, how are you doing, man? I'm very well, thank you. Good. I'm. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Great. Um, so I, I was, uh, oddly enough, one of the strange things about this show is that I when I I'm actually googling my friends which is I don't know if you do that I don't really do that right do you it's not like I'm like yeah googling Yaka bro or you know whoever like no, Eric no. Rabus or you know and I found this quote and by Michael Tollin do you know him I, I'm not familiar with this writer no not really Right. And he said, Jakob Bro isn't like most jazz guitarists. The Danish former Paul Motion, our friend, dear mm-hmm. now deceased friend, drummer Paul Motion, side person, is less concerned with hot licks or eye popping solos than in creating an atmosphere. And one of, what that triggered for me and what I think the universe was saying to me was I remember the first time you brought me over uh, to. Copenhagen to play with your no net and it was George Garzon the tenor yeah. tenor just guru and yeah. was Ben Street also on that show do you remember uh, no it was uh, it was AC on, and Nikolai on bass right woo Jakob, Jakob went right in with the like who are these people <laughs> AC uh, Anders Christian who's an amazing yeah. Danish bass player and then yeah. um, Nikolai Monk as you said I was going to talk about that mm. and uh, yeah, God bless him, man. And how's his family doing, Jakob? I think, yeah, I think, okay. I mean, it's, it's never going to go away, of course. It's, uh, yeah, it was way too young. So it's, uh, yeah, it's still, he, he's still here somehow because he was so young when he died. But uh, yeah, the whole scene is sort of, at least the scene I was surrounded by is still, hurt by it and suffering from it so it's uh it was really a, a hard <laughs> a kind of a tough note to start the podcast on <laughs> right as as i said let me bring you in <laughs> yeah. um but uh i i remember oh god nikolai man i remember being on the train with him we were you you were taking us around we were going to our house or something like this yeah and then I was on the train and, and Nikolai was sitting next to me or across the aisle. And yeah. he was talking to me about his, like how he felt mentally and yeah. emotionally. And I, I felt like I was trying to help him. And you no, know, I had really literally just come out of brain cancer at that point. And yeah, yeah, just, you know, anyway, you never know with this yeah. stuff. Um, you but, never know. But what I what I wanted to say after making that quote, yeah, from Michael Tolland, was so uh, <laughs> I'm starting to hear Eugenie in my head at the moment, which is a song <laughs> by Jakob Bro, which I, I'm obsessed with. And we played the concert. We were there maybe a week, so we were rehearsing then every day, yeah. and then we played the concert, and that's where I played that genius solo on my bass clarinet that we'd love <laughs> oh, to <yeah>. talk about <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> and uh and after the concert i went up to you and we're maybe taking a beer backstage or something like this you know mm-hmm. just hanging out maybe a glass of wine or whatever yeah and i looked at you and i said dude you did you take a solo i don't think you took a solo there's nine people on stage there's ten thousand people at the show and i was like <laughs> and you looked at me like andrew and I was like, oh, right. That was your solo. 
right? That was your solo. I organized this whole fucking thing. I wrote all this music. I like put you all out there. I, it was, it was magic that all of the shows with your no net have been magic. And I was like, I'm such an idiot. Like Jakob, that, that, that was, I mean, is that fair to say like that was your solo? Yeah, that's very fair to say. Uh, Yeah. I've never really, (laughs) I haven't really, thought about music like that like you have to be you're in charge of the band you have to take a solo or you have to show something on your instrument that's very uh, uh that's quite far away from how i see music somehow and and i love that band so much and there was just so many things going on all the time and i just take the liberty to to enjoy that also like i'm standing in the middle of this fucking like all these beautiful musicians in this band, like you and so George and Jesper Soit on, on on Alto and Anders and Nikolai and Kristen and Jakob Hoyer and so and we there was just so much sound happening. So I was just like, yeah, this is it's it's a uh, yeah, it's enough somehow. I don't <laughs> right. You don't you don't need to play like all your licks and like you know play your transcribed. Uh, solos or whatever you're no, just no 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 I mean, if if anybody if any, everybody had stopped playing or something i would have i would have done something but you know <laughs> <there's> so much- <laughs> i'm not sure if that's good or bad if you guys all would shut the fuck up you know i might have played something here <laughs> but that's good that's you know the, the fact, you know that but that's just you know i will i will never force myself into anything like that and, and that goes for trios contents no nets uh like if if um and that's not a, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, I, I just love when people, if, if if the music is happening by itself, you know, that's when I really enjoy being on stage. And I do uh, push buttons both before going on stage, trying to gather the right people to make the right sort of uh, balance between, you know, beauty and chaos and all kinds of things I'm, that are going through my mind before we, we, we play in the compositional phase as well, where I also think about the musicians and the, uh, yeah, so it's like once we're up there, uh, it's not like I'm not playing, but I don't really have the urge again to 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 be. You no, know, this is this is my band. Like uh, that that just it doesn't really go well with my way of thinking about music. Just show and, and also because I would have to dictate stuff. Then I'd have to say, well, George, Andrew, you you take the solo after George on this piece, and then I would like to solo. And it's like. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> it should just happen. Right. But yet, I mean, f- for the folks who are listening and I, 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 I usually post on social media mm-hmm. and ask people if they have questions. And one of the things that came up in a, in a short like dialogue I was having with somebody was, yeah. You know, basically, how much do you, Jakob Bro, how much do you, and I've always wondered this too, even though I've, you know, been, I've played with you a lot and been in situations with you, how yeah. much do you pre-conceive the music? I mean, you just put this record out on ECM with um, the Norwegian trump player Arve, uh, Arve yeah. Hendriksen, and yeah. sorry, folks, it's fucking like five in the morning here, so I'm just doing the best <laughs> I can, and we're accommodating uh, Jakob's uh, family schedule. He's got like oh, yeah. f- fifteen kids, but uh, and and with Jorge Rossi on drums, yeah. how much are we controlling the situation, or how much are we just going? You know, let's see what happens. Here's my melody, and. I won't put words yeah. in your mouth. I'm just curious. No, that, that's a, a good question. I think for me, it's uh, <clears throat> that's, that's been my way of, that's been my sort of uh, practice as a composer. How much do you need to bring in before the music basically just like lights up and starts uh, playing itself somehow? Mm-hmm. And that that's, uh, <clears throat> that, that's uh, yeah, that's the thing I'm always sort of, uh, uh, juggling with or, or or trying to to work on so, so so when I'm composing something that I if I if I for instance want to compose a more dense piece or something I might write two or three pieces while I'm trying to write write the dense piece that's like and then finally after that I realized that the dense piece wasn't really that great after all and I see these three small pieces that I wrote <laughs> while I was trying to write the 
the the real piece are actually really nice melodies, atmospheres that can be a starting point for music, basically. And uh, <clears throat> so that's that's uh, that's just something I'm working on constantly, knowing when to stop, basically, because I don't want to put stuff. I don't want to. The, the other thing about my music is that I'm highly dependent on personality. <laughs> I I need I'm not interested in in uh, in sort of great players. I'm interested in human beings, basically. Oh God, okay, <laughs> folks! Jakob just said I'm not a great player. He just wanted like my humanness. All right, well I'll take it. But but uh, but but, but, <laughs> huh? but but in that context, yeah, it, it's I think one of the reasons, and, and I, I'm this is I'm going to be a. a assuming this and mm -hmm. I wasn't actually going to bring it up, but one of the things that I do is I write for the people I'm playing with, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll write for Chris Speed or I'll write for sure. Kurt Rosenwinkel, you know, a guitar part. Yeah. And uh, I don't, I don't necessarily just write a third trumpet part or a no, no. tenor part. I'm actually writing for people. And that's one I guess that's one of the things that, again, I'm a little surprised that it's coming up, but since you kind of brought it up. So yeah. when, when you, like when you're working with your drummer, Joey Barron, or your bassist, yeah. uh, Thomas Morgan, are you thinking about them and how they're going to approach, you know, your composition or the melody or whatever you want to call it? Yeah. I mean, yes and no. <laughs> yes. Hmm. I, that's That was my practice early on. I was always only composing for specific people basically but then uh, as the as i you know as i grew older and uh, and also after having bands that have been touring a lot i've, I've realized that much of my music is it's fun to put it in front of different people also uh, like <clears throat> it's something i learned from it might sound completely obvious to many people but for me it was it it wasn't really that obvious i was like okay i did this record now with with um for instance uh, with with you and kurt and uh, paul Mo paul motion for instance and one of the ones we did all the music on this record now that's done i'm not gonna pick it up again but with paul motion when i was playing with him i remember him at, at the vanguard we were playing all, all of his old material basically and for me it was it was kind of a revelation somehow to be in the middle of, you know, of course, being at the Vanguard, playing with Paul Motion, but then all of a sudden playing Mumbo Jumbo, playing Etude, playing uh, It Should Have Happened a Long Time Ago, playing all these pieces that Paul had, uh, uh, for me, immortalized with his trio and with his quintet and quartets and stuff like that. All of a sudden he was playing in, with, with, with a different sounding group. And, uh, <clears throat> and that just made me want to experiment with my compositions the same way basically so yeah i've written a lot of music for specific people but then uh, i've also found it really fun to bring in those songs to different people to you know uh, that's a part of the experiment with the nonet as well like um, much of my music is that we play with the nonet if you put it with if you give it to to my trio for instance or if i play it with uh if i picked a song like uh, but it's any song we do with the Nonet and put it in front of Coney's Frisell and Paul Motion, for instance, and put it on my balladeering session, it would have been a calm sort of piece. We played it with the Nonet, it becomes a, a different sort of calm. Like, uh, so I'm just very, um, at, at the last many years, actually, I've been really inspired and also just intrigued by, by trying out my music with different uh, sounding personalities right on that note i here's a here's something a question um that i i i also enjoy the fact that i don't know pat metheny played a song i wrote when i was like 23 right he just recorded that like maybe two years ago at this point and yeah. that that was very strange like this song <laughs> i wrote you know and I, but I've always wanted my music to be that way that people can just yeah. grab it and then make something out of it without me being involved. And, but it's but I also, hear that, I want to hear that song. Man. You got to hear it. I'll send you a link. It's called That's Tune funny. Blues. And we were Fantastic. all, you were there in, in Boston and all of us were there in Boston and yeah. Kurt and Kurt Rosenwinkel, Chris Speed and 
Yeah. All of us were there in Bent Street. And yeah, and Metheny just found my song and recorded How? it. How? I don't know. I have no it's idea. Incredible. That's fucking incredible, man. Um, <laughs> I just know that I started getting checks, so I was kind of psyched about that. But uh... <laughs> wow. wow, that's fantastic. But that's very nice. It, uh, anyway, enough about me. But the thing that I, and this is more my agenda, okay? Like, I'm more controlling than you, Jakob, I think. Mm. Yeah, is... maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Not maybe, definitely. <laughs> is is that, I, I let me just explain. Jakob had this nine-piece band that he calls the No Net, and it was just all these beautiful people that we sort of touched upon. And there's this, aspect of your music that just i don't think people get a glimpse uh, of which is the hang i'm talking mm. about being on the train or on the yeah. plane or maybe then having dinner before the show or you know maybe even after the show in the green room that yeah. th this was it's so fun yeah. Like Creston Osgood on drums, Jakob Hoya, uh, again, our dear friend Nikolai <laughs> Monk and AC and, and all of us just spending time together off yeah. the stage and then getting on the stage, all that energy becomes a part of the music, in my opinion. Yeah. And I, I sure. wanted to ask you what you thought. Is that true or? I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, that's true. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I pretty earlier on just like discovered that I don't really if I if I want to play music and do it for the rest of my life I don't really want to walk around being worried about what's going to happen when you go on stage I want to be yeah I want to be looking forward to it and just like accept whatever happens up there and um, and that's as you say that that if you can sort of <laughs> if you can live up to that somehow <clears throat> then then the atmosphere before gigs and the trains and the planes five in the morning the lobby call will be different right. <clears throat> of course right. yeah. so i mean there's a lot of pressure when you when you're touring like you have a really great night <clears throat> and then you hit the hotel and you know okay fuck next to not to, tomorrow is gonna is a new day like you have to travel again and will you uh will the will the gig be as good as yesterday who's coming tomorrow blah 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 I mean, I was definitely when I was playing at the Vanguard for the first time with my own band uh, last year. That that was my like it was it was tough as hell for me. Like first night was great, and I was like, oh man, well, I hope tomorrow will be okay because then you know you got an email from Joe Lovano is coming down. And I was like, shit, I, I wish he was there for for tonight. And right, and and it's just like yeah, like I said, I just I just like I had to let go of that fear and just like say once we go out on stage. We listen to each other and we just like, yeah, we talk to each other, basically. Um, and we uh, we set ourselves free in a way. <clears throat> and uh, and to be able to do that 100% for me is either by not having any written music at all or, or have music that people can uh, pretty quickly become... Uh, find themselves in, within somehow. So that's been a, a part of my compositional practice as well, like writing music that that that, that works pretty quickly. You don't have to... Uh, is, yeah. this for, is, is this from since you were, you know, uh, you know, in your 20s or something like this? Or is it something that developed over time? Because, I mean, uh, the, your song, Eugenie, and, you know, the other songs you've written for the No Net, which is mostly yeah. how I, I've played with you, yeah, um, have that characteristic where it's like yeah i can kind of i can learn this me melody pretty quickly yeah but i it, w were you conscious of, of that when you were 21 or is it kind of like man i uh, had to kind of figure it out <laughs> i was I, I was struggling like as a composer of course when i was 21 still uh and doing many different things and not having you know the overview some some things work some things won't work and what you thought worked didn't and what you thought wouldn't work worked and you know i was very confused as i think many young people are <laughs> not me i wrote all my best <laughs> shit when i was when like were... 18 to 25 <laughs> yeah because but i, I think... was because i was dumb you know what yeah. i mean there's that aspect yeah. too like the naivete i'm like yeah i can write i'll write a legati piece or uh you know i'll try to sure. write a piece like mozart <clears throat> or beethoven i'm i'm not saying i achieved that but i, I just no, wasn't no. thinking about it sure but I, I still think that 
I mean, well, now I want to say two things because when I was, I guess Paul Motion, you know, I, I did my first album with him with, uh, after joining his band. I was like, um, <laughs> I, I, I didn't really feel ready to record with him, but I, I asked him if he wanted to record with me two years in it in the future something i would work my ass off and and he was right. like yeah yeah let's do it man i'm right <laughs> let's, let's record uh, let's record in 10 days when you come to new york to play with my band anyway and i was like shit man i'm not i'm not i'm not worthy i'm not ready basically <laughs> uh, but anyway, well, you, we, you had two years to prepare so <laughs> yeah so anyway we um, we the stuff i wrote for that session uh yeah i mean taught me a lot because of course there's going to be no rehearsals with promotion that's like Right. We just hit basically, and it's mostly first take because Paul would sound great on the first take, and it's like, yeah, that's where the, uh, yeah, people are finding the song, and there's a lot of mystery and love, and you know, surprises and stuff. So anyway, I I just realized from that session that it it was really great to be able to to present music that would not require like a ton of reading skills, but instead would sort of <clears throat> create an environment that people could be themselves self self within um, and i think so so i guess paul sort of was was he sort of taught me that by that from that session and and like when you talked about you know being in control and stuff like that i mean for, for speaking of you and the way i hear you play uh yeah i'd, I'd much rather set 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 you free in a way i'd much rather find some some sort of vibe write a, a melody that has some sort of uh yeah that has a strong starting point and then i want to hear you play I, it's like instead of writing a really really difficult line that you have to learn then i'd much rather hear your own lines on top of something i'm creating and and i don't know it's just uh of course both things can be great but it's uh it's just the way I've been working. And for my last album with, with Arve, uh, I actually brought in some older pieces. Uh, now you said you wanted, you, like when you were young, you were writing <clears throat> and didn't know what you were doing. You were just doing it. And and I did sort of the same thing when I was right. in my early 20s. Even before that, I was writing. I mean, I remember George Gasson giving me a, a lesson at Berkeley. Who? Who? George Gasson. Oh, George Gasson, yeah. He was like, yeah, man, write a write a song with the most crazy line you can come up with. Right. And you don't have to be able to hear it or anything. You don't even have to be able to play it. Just like, go bananas. <laughs> and? and I, just, I just went bananas and I wrote a really difficult line with like rhythmic. I want to hear, hear that, man. <laughs> I want to hear that. And, and then, you know, uh, I went back to Copenhagen and I... I gathered a band called Beautiful Day, also with Nikolai Munk on bass and mm. Jeppe Gram on drums and Jakob Dinesen. And we were we were playing a gig uh, and uh, we were playing some standards. And and then I had I had written a ballad on one of the pages and I gave it to the saxophone player. We played the ballad and he said, hey man, why don't we play the song on the other side? Because I practiced that line. And I was like, seriously? Right. It's like a school exercise. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, we, uh, what are they? Yeah, I mean, uh, not uh, what do they call those things? Like a uh, etude or something like yeah. that. Yeah, like meant to practice, like alone at home kind of thing or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, and then you know, after the gig came up to me, he was like, and at that time, you know, I, I was yeah, as as I am now, I really love Jakob, and he came up to me and said, "If you could write more of that stuff, I really think we have a thing going here." And I didn't tell him how I wrote it. I was just like, hmm, I can do that. And I went back to my, <laughs> I was living in an old uh, nursing nursing home for old people at that time. Wow. And I just started writing. Yeah. I was living, I just, uh, I was, they, they, it was like an old abandoned nursing home. They were rebuilding it so that the old people could come back into it. And it was like, it was a freaking, like it was such a scary place. Like, you know, it's a huge place, you know, with, maybe 50 small rooms for elderly people, a uh, huge dining hall. It's like, uh, you know, the silence of the lambs almost. like a, it's, a, a, it's pretty much where you go to die. That's yeah. pretty much what they are. <laughs> and, and then uh, I just wrote a whole shitload of really difficult, weird lines. Basically. Wow. And, 
And we started playing those things, as, and I just like pretended that it was, yeah, this is how I write music. And slowly we, we found a sound, and I found a, an intuitive way of knowing when a song was done, basically. Uh, so I, I learned a lot from that period. <laughs> and the band stopped when I started thinking, okay, I need to have my ears following me now. I have to be able to hear what I'm writing. <laughs> and that's that's when the band started, that died, basically. Well, uh, Right. And I mean, one of the things that I I am, am accomplishing with this show is bringing people in who maybe don't know when you drop AC, you know, yeah. like who's AC or when we, even sure. when we say Thomas Morgan or or Paul Motion, you know, whatever yeah. we're talking about or Arva uh, Hendrickson. And, and one thing that I've noticed about your music, Jakob, that I really love. And something that I, I I very much respect is that you have this ability to bring people in to your music in a way that they don't have to know what an, I don't know, an E minor seven chord is. They don't have to know what <laughs> the form of a, of a AABA standard. Like you just have this, you know, I can put on balladeering, you know, or I can put on Eugenie. And, and I'm just like, this is, you know, in anything. That, almost everything that you've done and people just it's just really enjoyable i'm not really thinking about the mm. technique and i wondered is, is that conscious on your part or are you just being you and then people love you and you know watching your videos <laughs> or listening to your music you know 20 million times because they just no i'm serious know. i'm being very serious yeah i mean i don't know it's <clears throat> i definitely feel like uh, I mean, for me, it's like a lifelong journey, of course. Like, the, I want to create music and I want to capture moments with the people I love, basically. And and uh, and um, I'm very inspired by a lot of different uh, friends, and 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 I might hear different things in them than than other people here. And so I try to invite them in. And uh, and I try to, in some way, I guess, it's it's a way of producing, I guess, or something. It's almost it's it's my way of composing, at least. I'm trying to to um, to set the scene, so so to speak, so that the different people I'm inviting can can be can themselves. Come out with it. Yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, somehow. Yeah, and what I said about. I'm not interested in great players. It, it, of course, that's you know that's I can't, it's like I'm, I'm I'm interested in, but but it, you know I'm interested in, in the human quality of the great players. By the way, whatever, what does it mean to be a great player? Because you know what I'm I mean, saying. I, I, that's yeah, arguable I, as well. Because yeah. when I hear like I don't know George Garzon play, yeah. he's a great player. But is is yeah. it te- what's it, is it technique? Is it I mean. Who knows yeah. what that is? Jakob Bro is a fucking amazing, great player, right? But I mean, could you play? I don't know. Pick a song that's really difficult. I don't even know what song that would no, be. No, no, it's different. I <laughs> right, but but the, the, I, I don't. I, I have a hard time understanding when people say, you know, I think yeah, what, in your case, you have this maybe intuitive or instinctual ability to understand, like, hey, I'm gonna hand. Andrew, I'll just use myself as, yeah. a, as an example, a melody, and then just let yeah. him fuck off with it because that's what Andrew, Andrew's going to do that anyway. Even if I tell yeah. him to stay inside <laughs> the lines, he's not going to yeah. stay inside there. Is no, that no. fair or what? Of course. Yeah, that's very fair. Uh, of course it is. It's like, I think my music basically, it, it has to come alive somehow. It's like, um, so so the way I'm writing, it, it is, is, again, it's like a... Th- fine line between nothing and a whole lot basically it's like i'm trying to put in just enough so that the music you know that's just a little sparks here and there that can you know ignite and then the, the whole fire will start and it's it's a uh, yeah and 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 i just like with with, with you or with chris speed or when i was playing with uh jesper soit was a, was a danish alto saxophone player with konitz or with AC with uh, all these. I mean, that's the Jim Black or whatever. It's, it, I'm. Uh, I, I I'm just. I feel so grateful that I 
am able to play with all these beautiful musicians and then i just try to set set up some sort of uh, environment kind of thing yeah, right basically yeah so that the so, so that people can you know take off that that's that's uh like yeah. okay so i i as i as i told you when we were talking earlier um you know before we started that mm. um there's just an aspect of what you do it's kind of like you're having a dinner party and yeah you're cooking a meal but you're not telling people how to eat it you're not saying they have to eat everything they don't have to have dessert totally. if they don't want to if they sure. don't want a glass of wine that's fine and, yeah. and if they want to go in in the other room and be alone you're like okay and yeah. it just seems like you have this like whereas i know myself and and some other people i've worked with are more controlling like yeah. you got to have the salad first, <laughs> then you're going to eat the steak or whatever it is that's next. And then yeah. you're going to do this. And then at nine o'clock, you got to leave my house. And yeah. I have been that person. But with yeah. you, I feel like you're like, all right, everybody come over to my house and, you know, do whatever yeah. you want. Go eat some crackers or is yeah, that fair? Very true. Very fair. I, I like that uh, picture somehow. And I think what I, as a composer, then hope to, bring in and if, if if what I'm bringing in is not strong enough everybody could leave and then that wouldn't be so much fun so I'm hoping that you know there's always somebody that are sort of interested in in in, 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 in the overall sort of vibe of the piece I'm bringing in and if that's the case then the music will sort of play itself I'm, as you say I'm fine with people leaving the states I'm fine with you know Hey, so it's like totally a, cool. a conceptual piece for the future where we all like you have the no net and we all yeah. leave the stage and you're alone. <laughs> yeah. But the, that, but the, yeah, huh? that would work too, I guess. It would, it would work, but it would be <laughs> waste of flight, flights, I guess. <laughs> so so let me get back to what, what sparked this part of the conversation. Yeah. Are you consciously making your music this lovable i mean you were talking about gratitude and how much gratitude you have for the people around you and the people that you asked to make yeah. your music and that seems post i'm grateful yeah. that so and so yeah, played yeah, yeah. with me i'm grateful that you know manfred yeah. eicher from ecm asked me to make this record yeah. but are you doing any pre you know manifestations or conscious like thinking or is it just no uh, Right. Yeah. The answer is no. I mean, I'm just, it, I, I, for me, the, the, the whole, like the face of composing is, it's a real joyous time, basically. This it's a time where I don't judge anything. I'm just trying to find little, little melodies and harmonies that I think can, can grow somehow into something, into music. And, and that's, <clears throat> it's such a nice face to be in, basically. Um, I think, it might sound like, I don't know, but I think just plain, just like living your life, all the stuff you experience in your everyday life is is part of what comes out, I guess. And uh, some of my stuff is, yeah, it's pretty. Some of it is uh, lovely. Some of it is sad. I don't know. It's like, but it's it's all just a. It's I'm trying to just be basically honest to 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 what's coming out when I'm, when I'm, am in the compositional phase, basically. Uh, and you, usually when I try to, to go, uh, to take a different route somehow and make some, something contrasting to that, it, uh, yeah, it, it becomes, becomes less strong somehow, I think. And so <clears throat> in, in that way, I'm coming back to the fact that I'm also very dependent on, on the people I work with, because I, because I really, I really need, need uh, my friends to help me paint these pictures, basically. Uh, and, um, and I mean, and, I mean, yeah, you can't, you, yeah. you can't have a dinner party without guests. I mean, you, <laughs> yeah, you, you can sit down and have, you know, whatever you're eating by yourself, yeah, yeah. and that's one thing. But you can't, yeah, enjoy a full-on, you know elaborate meal 
without yeah. your friends and you want them to enjoy it. But I, again, sure. I'm, I'm going to repeat cause I'm a repeater. And also yeah. I don't want just like, you know, Bob, Matt and Tom to enjoy hearing from you. I want people to understand sure. that you have this way yeah. of presenting your music that just seems to bring people in. And so again, I asked you if it was conscious and you're saying, no, I'm just doing my best to make yeah. beauty or maybe sadness <laughs> at times. Yeah. And, and I, I just, for my own sake, I want to say that I really respect everything you've been doing. And, you know, the fact that, you know, people just <laughs> say the nicest things about you on the internet. Again, I Googled <laughs> you and I'm like, oh, my, oh man, people love Yaka bro. And they're not musicians. And, you know, they're just people yeah. like, man, your music is so cool or you know, <laughs> beautiful. And I, and I, I think that that's a, a special thing. Cause I, mm. I, I don't think uh, everybody gets to enjoy that in their lifetime. Mm. And so yeah, I, I, I enjoy that a lot. I think it's, it's just as a, I mean, I, I get, it, it might sound like uh, strange, but uh, maybe not actually. I, I do get moved. I, I need to get moved myself of also when I'm composing, of course, hmm. I need to, when I'm writing something, I need to feel it. And that's, that's, uh, yeah, I can sort of sense the, it's it's a beautiful thing for me to be in the when I'm composing something and I can and I discover inside of all these notes chords that I've been working on for so many years. Then all of a sudden I I realize that there's a little tiny uh, thing that I can take out and use as a composition that I have maybe seen and looked at the last ten years and not really been ready to see it as a composition. So so I I get really uh, I, I just love that phase basically when I when I discover uh, the starting point of a composition and then I can start to uh, think about uh, the people I'd like to 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 hear make this st the composition come alive. I, th I think it's <clears throat> yeah. Then you know then I do. I mean if I play Eugenia on the piano, I, I really like that piece as a piece. I don't really think it's my piece. <laughs> I think I just found it somehow. Huh. So I can get I can get really moved by it just by playing it at the piano and be like, man, this is a fucking beautiful song. <laughs> but I'm not like, you know, tapping myself on the show, like, yeah, man, you wrote a great song. I just feel like it's uh, it was already out there. I just had to sort of uh, yeah, pull it. Like discover it or find yeah, it, as you said, something yeah, like this. Yeah. We were talking about that I was I mean, I'm gonna use the word impressed, which sounds incredibly weird but I am that you somehow found this way to bring the world into your music. I mean, I'm looking at some of your videos and I know that one from a church in Aarhus, yeah. I think, yeah. was it Aarhus where that? Um, that's probably Copenhagen. If it's the church, Ross Borson's church, right? Yes. Yeah. That's in Copenhagen. Yeah. But then all these people like 20,000, 30,000 people are watching this video and it's just, uh, not that we're all about, you know, views and likes, but on another level, I mean, I'm just think it's so wonderful that you're, I, I feel like you're giving the world a virtual hug and not asking them to understand your music on an intellectual level. Is there something that you're doing? Like, I mean, are you saying, Hey, I'm just making this music and I want people to enjoy it. I mean, I think, you know what I'm talking about. We have friends who maybe even push back and say, you know, if you don't understand what I'm, what I'm doing, man, you can't be a part of my music. Does that make any sense or am I being out of my mind here? No, no, that makes sense. I think, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I'm, I'm happy that you say, of course, that, I'm, that, the music I try to do is, I don't know, it's like I'm not really trying to, to force anything. Like we talked about earlier also, it's, it's just a matter of accepting, basically. Uh, what are we accepting here? Like, well, what do you mean when you say that? What, what, what does it being accepting mean? Um, well, for me, at least in, in the musical term, it means to, to not have any sort of... Uh, uh, expectations in terms of what I want the music to sound like. Like if I if I invite you and we do a concert together with uh, 
my good friend from Denmark, Chris Nosgaard, who's a great drummer, which we, we, we you remember we played a, do, a trio gig, right? Yeah, Kressen. Yeah, Kressen. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm still, that trio gig for me was very strong. I still think back to that, basically. And and, and mm. really, and, but anyway, if I invite you to, and, and Chris to do a concert of mine, it's like, I'm, I might bring in music, but, uh, and we might, you know, have a rehearsal or whatever. The ones we get up on stage, um, I'm like, I'm accepting, you know, the ways of the music, basically. And I, I'm giving, I'm, I'm just letting loose. I'm not gonna, you know, if if, if you if you all of a sudden start the concert, you know, with with a bass clarinet, long introduction, ten minutes long, fifteen minutes long. I'm not, Never. I'm not tripping, like standing next to you and be like, <laughs> oh man, I wanted to play the melody first. And <laughs> right, right. I'm, I'm fucking closing my eyes and enjoying the moment because you all of a sudden have something that you want to say to the right. audience. And that's, that's, that's what I mean about accepting, basically. Uh, that's, this is how the, the songs sounded tonight. And tomorrow is going to be a different day, basically. And I think that way of not attacking the music, but basically just like letting it loose in a way is, 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 I have a feeling that that resonates in, in, in the audience as well, because then they are also drawn into it in a way, because the audience has an effect on the musicians being on stage. So we're basically not, I'm, I'm never trying to sort of stuff anything down anybody's throat, the musicians right. or the audiences. I'm more trying to just, here I am. Let's see. I'm gonna create a little sound here, and then let's see where that sound will take us all, basically. Uh, but it's just me thinking. I have no idea. Like basically, I'm I'm just trying to be honest to to, to myself and, and to the stuff I hear, basically. I, it sounds like to me, if I was gonna interpret what you said, because I'm I, I'm annoying that way, that you're just being genuine. You're not really thinking. I, I'm I'm trying to make. I'll use a meal analogy again. You know, I don't, I don't know if that's lame, but you know, I'm not trying to make food that everybody enjoys. I'm just making yeah. food that I think is wonderful and people can do whatever they want with it. Yeah. Is that fair or is there another analogy? Great. No, I think that's great. I mean, and I think it's a process. That's the, a beautiful thing for me about music is that it follows you in your, in your personal development also, because it's like, you know, like now you talked about food. I still, if I cook for people, I'm still like, oh, I hope they like it. Right. <laughs> and you know, it's like, yeah, I'd like to you know, get to a point where I'm, you know, I'm satisfied with the food myself, and I'm just like, here it is. I hope you, you know, enjoy it. And I'm, but if you don't like it, it's not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be to 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 gain some sort of, uh, you know, just to grow as a human being and to stand like really. Stand tall. Is that a way of saying something? Really, be firm in your own, in your own. I mean, stand tall, or you're just you feel secure or confident yeah, in confident. your own in your own shoes or your own yeah, clothing or so. whatever. Yeah. Saying, and I remember. Do you remember that uh, bootleg recording from Atlas? In uh, that's an Aarhus, right? Yeah, that's an Aarhus. Do yeah. you remember that recording of your Nonet in at Atlas? It's a bootleg. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. A, I think I have a few recordings of, of. Yeah, and I, I listened to that a bunch when you first sent it to us. God, that was probably eight years ago. It was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. But I listened to it again before I talked to you, and I and the audience is screaming. You know, there's just all this love going on. There's all this magic yeah. happening on stage. And it just is like, you're not even trying to tell people what to do. I mean, yes, there was structure. We had your melodies and everything, yeah. but uh, my God, you have your live uh, performance, your shows. And that as again, as we talked about before your, tr that show at the church and the other things I've seen on the internet are, there's just something about how, yeah, it, I don't know. It's just very organic. It's mm. grass fed. It's organic. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it just is so, wow. Yagab is just like letting things happen. And there's not a lot of people that do that. That's mm. all. Yeah. 
I, I think some folks are, especially in our world of jazz, even though it's improv, mm. there's a lot of control that goes on. Sure. Is that fair? or are, yeah, I, yeah, that's something I've talked to, to Joey about a lot, actually, Joey Barron. He's, he, he, we, we've played so many concerts with the tree with Joey Barron and Thomas Morgan. And, and Joey was, yeah, he, he's, he really loves that trio. Um, I think that's, I can say that without, <laughs> he's told me many times. And, and one thing he really loves, of course, is the fact that he can, he can use his imagination and he, and he can go wherever he wants, basically. Um, and I, so I think it's, it's perfectly fair to say that I'm really trying to not control anything, basically. Um, but still, I think that the, the music ends up having some sort of stamp or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm from me because I'm bringing in the composition or uh, putting people together. Or at, at least I like to think that it has uh, a little stamp on it. But but anyway, it, it doesn't really matter if, if the music turns out great. It's that's the most important thing. I think. I, well, I, I think people are getting an understanding of your process here that yeah. you're really not interested in controlling the, let's put it this way. So you put together your trio and or the no net with nine yeah. people, you got to book flights. You're, you're bringing over me and maybe some other people from the U S and so you're, you're organizing flights and hotel and, you know, finding a, a tour bus. So, I, I yeah. assume that some on level on some level you're either designating this stuff or you're doing it yourself and or your manager is or whatever, but there's a lot of fucking energy that you're putting into this and you're writing the compositions. But then when, when we get to the stage, you're like, all right, whatever <laughs> you guys want to do. <laughs> right? Totally. But that's um yeah, that's so important for me. It's like um that's how it has to be for me somehow. I have to, I don't own the music and I don't have any, like, I don't sort of like the way you feel on this particular concert day. I want that to come out. Hmm. So if I don't want to put any lid on, on you to avoid that coming out, basically that's, so I, I, uh, you I, you can't put a lid on me, by the way. Yeah, Nobody can. Yeah, I know. That, that, <laughs> I <do. laughs> that I do. <laughs> Sorry, but I just have fun. No, it's great. Yeah, and I think you know, like you know, as, as I talked about how I'd like to be more confident in the kitchen. Then I'm, I guess, as a musician and a composer, I'm getting more and more confident that what I, you know, what I bring in is enough. To make the music happen if i pick the right people then what i bring in will be enough i know that basically i'm not so sure about my cooking <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you know that's like and that's a part of you know that's i, I really enjoy that part of of of, uh, of growing as a as a person also just like it's okay at this point for me to say that i'm not really i'm not interested in um, you know my god i would love to be able to play the guitar, the way you play the bass clarinet, for instance. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be possible. Like, I, it's going to be, for me, walking down a dead end, I can spend the rest of my life trying to do that, and you will still sound better. It will still sound better on a bass clarinet. So it's much more fun to, for me to invite you to be a part of my music, <laughs> to get that vibe and that feeling and that sound. So it's like, I'm not really, uh, you said I was a great guitar player, and I, I, yeah, I play the guitar, uh, and I do my absolute best. But but, but there's just so many guitar players that can play so many things that I can't play. Um, and and then you know what what is you know what is music? What can you like? And if I put on a record with uh, with uh, John Lee Hooker, or an old blues player who's playing ten bars of blues, and he moves me like so much that I wanna you know, scream. Yeah, you know, it's like he he can't play uh, ESP or uh, whatever is needed to be accepted in the jazz world uh, as a student or whatever. So I'm just saying, it's like it's a whole it's a whole sort of uh, it's so great to 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 grow with the music and to sort of realize what you can and what you can't do and just accept you know what you can and what you can't do and of course always try to improve. But uh, but I just like. I'm really 
enjoying the stage of my life where it's yeah it's okay for me to I play the guitar well enough to to create music basically and I think that's I don't think I played the guitar well enough to do a a duo album of standard material for instance I would never go that down that road uh, right. Standards being jazz standards is what you're talking yeah, about, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting. I I can remember an occasion and at least one occasion. And the musicians I was playing with were just like kind of kicking my ass, whatever that means. I mean, they yeah. were just doing something that I was not yeah. capable of. And I just stopped playing. I was like, all right, you, you, you got it. Whatever yeah. that is, you you got it because, wow. I can't, I don't want to pretend to be able to do this, but yeah. there's just something about you, Jakob, that you are, I'm going to get all mushy here, but you're very nurturing and you really have a way, maybe it's subconscious, maybe it's, I don't, I don't believe in unconscious. I think we do everything for a reason where you just nurture people's strengths. Mm. And my strength is, you know, Andrew, go ahead. You want to play a 20 minute intro on bass clarinet? Go for it. Cause, uh, yeah. right. And yeah. with whoever you're working with, you just have this way of just allowing them to be. And I'll be curious to see how your children turn out to see if you're doing that with them or if you're <laughs> trying to, you know, be a controlling dad, which I doubt, but no, not really. Is, is, is that a fair assessment of you or, I mean, am very I, much. yeah, I, I, I'm very happy to hear what you're saying of course and, and i mean it this and all, yeah. also i want everybody to know that yakin yakin and i have postponed this interview like 15 times because of certain <laughs> either his situation yeah. didn't you postpone it once and then my situation yeah i postponed it for the kids and then you postponed it for the pipes for the well it was the electricity and it was oh. it was literally like armageddon it yeah. was a pop apocalyptic. I mean, there was like fires and manhole covers blowing and black smoke and the <laughs> power went out. The heat went off. It was like 15 degrees Fahrenheit. It was yeah. insane. Oh, terrible. Yeah. So anyway, like it was a long road, like yeah. six weeks until we got to this moment where we're talking. Yeah. And yeah. I haven't then seen you in probably two years, three years. Oh, no, it's, it's a, uh... Yeah, he's gonna tell me exactly. Fuck you. No, no, no. It's too, uh, <laughs> we have to do the. We, we, we have to do the donut uh, again. Huh? We, I want to do the donut again. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just have to. Yeah, it's just like I'm. I'm thinking, and who's? I guess. I guess maybe Thomas will. Thomas Morgan will 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 play bass instead of Nikolai then. Right. And the AC. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about it a lot because it's. Uh, it's a band. Yeah, it, it's a different, it's a different uh, sort of outcome. It's a different energy. It's a different yeah. energy. Different. You should check out Carmen Rothwell, this bass yeah. player. She's very nice. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, oh, wow, that, the thought of playing, Jakob, all right. <laughs> uh, I, I'll, uh, here. <coughs> Jakob, Go yeah. back and listen to that Atlas bootleg. If you don't yeah. have it, I'll send it to you. Yeah. And it's just the fucking thing, man. We took the train that day. Nikolai was still with us. Yeah. That was the time that I had that conversation. Bill McHenry played tenor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. But the That's gig fun. was just fuck You and I, and I, the reason I'm off camera is because I'm going to like kind of focus on myself a little bit. But the fuck you and I sound so good together, dude. <laughs> You know that blues? What did you call it? That blues? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh? Roots. Yeah. Roots. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit, dude. You and I are playing our asses off. Yeah. And oh, Creston, for whatever reason, was cranky about something. I don't know if it was his kids or like he was mad at us or you or something. And he's playing way too much. Okay. And... Uh, Oh yeah, I remember that he kept like he didn't want to end the song. He yeah, just, no, and he didn't like the bridge. He didn't want yeah. to end the song. And he's like, yeah. fuck this bridge. And he's like doing all this shit. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. That band is and you do not have to have me in that band, but God, Jakob, 
you and I sound so oh, fucking and, amazing together on that shit, man. Well, and Jesper, you, everybody does, but uh, okay, I'm yeah, just, yeah. Uh, I'm just. You and, you and Jesper are, are unreplaceable in that band. Completely. Unreplaceable. Unreplaceable. So. Uh, Jesper, you were like the, yeah, that's the, that's the heart somehow for me. Um, it, it was interesting. Uh, do you want to, like, to end this? I, I would love to talk about Jesper if I bring us back sure. in. Yeah. And, um, or Jakob, again, if there's anything I, I missed or that no, I no, believe, no, no, no. believe no, me, no. I have, I don't, you probably know this, but God, fucking musicians are just arrogant cunts. <laughs> and so, but so I, now I've been asking, like, is there something that I didn't bring up that you would like to talk about? And if yeah. not, then I'll just, I'm fine. I think we talked about many good things. I'm happy. Okay. I'm I'm happy too, but you'd be surprised. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> so um I'll go back on camera. Give me a minute to bring us back in. And yeah. um I for whatever reason either one have a Maybe I'll ask you a question. Can I yeah, do yeah, yeah. Okay, good. There you go. See, that's what I'm talking about. All right. So let me bring us back in. Yeah. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll open the door. Yeah. Hey, everybody. We are back with Jakob Bro, guitarist, amazing friend of mine for eight bagillion years from Denmark who's playing with this camera. And uh, he's in this really cool chair that I don't know if he wants to talk about, but it's a cool chair. Um, Jakob, is, to conclude, is there anything you'd like to ask? I, yes, there is. You know, when I grew up uh, as a young musician, right? This, uh, the scene in New York, like you, Chris Speed, Jim Black, Kurt Rosenwinkel, when I heard Human Field, for instance, for the first time, I was completely in shock, basically. Um, so, so my question, and what I would, what wanted to ask you is, um, is how the hell you got to sound the way you do? Because because there's so much, uh, I don't know, for me, um, like when I've been talking in this podcast about uh, personality and, and, uh, and, and finding players that has something to say like a story people sounding human and uh, yeah and it's just <clears throat> i think you are a completely like one to one one of the best examples of that like how how do you go from picking up the horn and and then expressing yourself like you do it's it's a saxophone like thousands of people are playing that instrument every day and and there's nobody that sounds the way you do that's that's something that i yeah, that's something that I just like. I can't. It, I, it's it's a mystery to me. This mu and that's a, the mystery of music. Like, you can pick up an alto saxophone, the bass clarinet, and in in one second I know it's you, and in one second I'm moved by what's going on. And that's uh, yeah, that's very beautiful. I think, and and actually, uh, it's a, it's something that I don't think that many young, I consider you a young, <laughs> young player. <laughs> Yeah, at age 85, you're a young player. You know what, you know, Jakob, first of all, that's a huge compliment coming from, from you because I, I I also feel the same about you. Like I can tell, you know, that it's you playing pretty quickly, even if it's just, uh, you know, with no video. I'm like, oh, that must be bro playing, man. By the way, just as an anecdote, I remember this one time on the train Uh, we were on two earth and no net. Everybody just started going, Yaka bro, Yaka bro. Can you say it like in Danish? Like Yaka bro. They started saying, we're saying it fast. And I don't know. Everybody was just like, Jakob is just like fucking hooking it up, man. You know, we're <laughs> on tour. Do you remember that? Not really, but uh, it's Yaka bro. Yeah, Yaka bro. Everybody, <laughs> Creston, AC, you know, uh, Nikolai, you know, Jakob Hoya, uh, yeah. Jesper. And everybody's like, Yaka bro. Yaka bro, Yaka bro. And it was all throughout the train car. It was this great moment. Like, you know, dude is hooking it up, man. And uh, as, as far as like my own sound, I had this teacher. This is what I attribute it to, but, you know, people can argue. Is I had this teacher when then I was like 
14 years old, maybe, maybe 13, 14, 15 years old, something like this. And he just said to me, don't ever sound like anybody else but yourself. I was like, I don't even know what that means. Yeah. And he actually, this is going to be niche, but he said, listen to Lee Konitz. He goes, yeah. don't ever sound like anybody but yourself. And Lee Konitz, and then also Ornette Coleman. He's okay. like, these people do not sound like anybody else but themselves. Yeah. And uh, that could be it. Or maybe I'm just, uh, maybe I'm just, uh, you know, maybe I'm an asshole. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like one thing is like one thing is your sound and 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 your sort of harmonical sort of approach, but melodical playing is. But the other thing is how you how you go beyond, you know, go beyond being a really really skilled saxophone player. There's something happening when you're playing that I think you know when I'm. When you're listening now, I'm saying some really big names here, but like if you if I listen to Paul Blay, for instance, he plays the piano, but he goes beyond somehow. There's something that that goes where, where the music is like unexplainable somehow. It's, when, he's almost like Paul Blay is like in the universe or something like yeah, this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but that's it's just a quality that I think many older musicians have. It's something I've, I've been yeah I've been fortunate enough to play with a lot of musicians from an older generation. Stanko had had an uh, approach with his trumpet where he could move move me with, with hardly any anything. And uh, and it's just like it's not something you can learn in school. And I don't even know if I can explain what it is so people won't even know what they should look for. <laughs> it's just something that that can that will that you will feel if you know If you if you really uh, if you if you genuinely listen to music and, and have been doing that for your whole life, then there's something that that yeah that will be notify no notifiable no that's something that you can uh, noticeable. I think noticeable, is the word noticeable, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, and that's what yeah. I'm saying about you. It's like it's for me. It's it's not it's kind of rare for a musician in your generation. I'm not saying that nobody else can do that, but there's not, in my opinion, there's not uh, many many that can do that. Sort of go beyond, say, okay, playing a saxophone, you've, there's so much energy coming out of that horn, there's so much sound, but you're actually creating a, you're creating a moment that like you're making. When you're done, it's like hmm, that was, that was uh, a special <laughs> five minutes. Like this, this was. Right. Uh, this was You know, I, have, I don't know what to say. It's just yeah, like I, I have no idea how yeah, how to describe that. Like I don't know what that is. Yeah, I I don't I I believe I understand what you're saying, and I know that that's something I've thought about from a young age. Is like I don't want to sound like you know that guy or that girl yeah. or that person or this person. Yeah. I want to sound like myself, and I want I want to be able to make. Uh, A, 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 a sound that when people hear that sound it's me because yeah. you and I are not the, even the same person here right like I mean I know it's you talking you know it's me yeah so why would I want to like be a cookie cutter you know yeah. saxophonist but, right but, that, but it goes beyond the sound I think because I can hear your sound like this that's you, you, you achieved that a long time ago but for me it's more like For instance, that when I heard, um, I listened to Arne Coleman playing Copenhagen many years ago, also about him not playing, like stopping at a, at a at a crazy time where I was just like baffled. I was like, what? He stopped playing right at that time. And I was like, I went home and I was so moved by it. It was so beautiful, that moment, basically. When I heard Wayne in Copenhagen many years ago. Wayne who? Shorter playing with uh, Danilo Perez and uh, John Petitucci and uh, Brian Blade. You know, he was constantly, it seemed like he was constantly, he was, he was, he was waiting and then he was like, he's, he put in some energy all of a sudden that, that just like, it's almost like he, he put in a contrast, like if the band was going this way, he was, he, was, he was like deliberately going the other way and it just like made this whole, like just created a, a fire somehow inside of me. I was like, whoa, this is like incredible. 
at least like and i'm just I'm not to i'm just saying that that that's something that i'm thinking about in music like that that's that's where i would like to you know you want you want to go to a place where you you know you set things on fire basically you know, when the, when the audience is listening you want them to be you know engaged yeah and also they they should go home with a feeling of having experienced something that they might not have understood but it moved them in a way right. and and that's just like it's a it's just something that i've been very fascinated by with a lot of of course the greats like the old greats there's so many of them that can that, you know uh, but i think you have that quality in your playing which is a very very rare Thank you. thing Thank you. So I was just curious if you could just in maybe two, three words, tell me how to get there. <laughs> well, first of all, I think you're already doing it. And so I, it's very humbling that you're asking me that question. But second of all, I don't really care if my audience walks away understanding my uh, harmonic approach or my you know, compositional approach. I want them to walk away with a feeling. And by the way, that doesn't have to be happy, you know, joy and like, yay, life is great, man. It could be like, you know, darkness. Maybe it brings something out in them that, you know, they need to look at. Yeah. But, and, you know, I know you explore those places too and with your music. And I don't, I, other than brain cancer, which was, relatively recent i mean we're talking 10 years ago at this point you yeah. know in my younger years i dude i've talked to my friends about this and yeah. our friends yeah. i have no idea yeah. <laughs> i have no idea where this shit was coming from yeah. like you said you did not write eugenie which is your song yeah or, or these other things it just you just found it that's yeah. what i think i was doing do i know that to be true i don't know i, I mean do. i've I feel like I was writing this music and playing this music that I was just finding. It was like kind of like a Easter egg hunt for lack of a better term. I have no idea. Okay. Is that your kids in the background or a kid? No, there was one kid who came in. Jacob's <laughs> <Right? laughs> yeah. like yeah. one of yeah. my 50 kids were in the room, but it's all good now, man. He climbed the stairs. He just <laughs> left climbed the stairs. So. <laughs> <laughs> he climbed the stairs. Oh my God. I love you. I miss you, man. Yeah. Likewise. <laughs> it, like when this is all done, I mean, we're going to have to at least have like a coffee oh, or something. Like yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Well, I'll be in New York in November. Hopefully if, if uh, Willis Vanguard reopens. Who knows? Right. So know. like in conclusion, yeah, we've been to everybody. A lot of people I've had on the show throw around the village Vanguard. Like it's uh you know, we're talking about Subway, you know, like that uh, sandwich yeah. shop or something. The Vanguard in Manhattan, in the West Village, is an iconic, brilliant, and it is a jazz club. But yeah. it, it's just, I mean, Jerry Stiller used to play there. Did you know that? That Max, the owner? Yeah. yeah. What's, her, what's, what's her last name? Max's last name or yeah. Gordon? Gordon. Right. Max Gordon. and Gordon. Lorraine. Lorraine, yeah. But Max wanted to make it kind of like a cabaret kind of thing. Okay. And this was back in the 60s or yeah. 70s. But Lorraine, his wife, didn't. Yeah. So they would have Jerry Stiller there, and then they'd have a jazz gig. And that might even be Coltrane or some or Bill Evans, yeah. you know, these amazing people. Yeah. And Lorraine was like, nah, it's a jazz club. And it's just <laughs> the Village Vanguard. The fact that, you know, on the news and with our current governor, Andrew Cuomo, has never brought up this fucking iconic place in Manhattan. Like, we need to get this place opened. Yeah. Has, I had the New York press secretary on. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you got to get the governor to talk about yeah. opening up these places yeah. And he's like, I'll see what I can do. And now, at this point in time, Andrew Cuomo's in a lot of trouble. We'll see what happens with him. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, I can't believe it, right? Yeah. I mean, that place is just, like, out of control. And by the way, Jakob, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to take over for i I'm going to do my thing. 
one of the, one of the aspects of playing at the Vanguard that I think we miss out on because when we're on tour, like I said, we're on the train or a flight or we're hanging out together in the tour bus and yeah. we're having food and we're blah, blah blah. With the Vanguard, we all go back home or to our hotel room and then we yeah. just show up the next night and you don't get all that other energy. Yeah. What? True. Is okay. your kid going down the stairs now or what? He's on his way in. Oh yeah, right on. <laughs> wow, nice house. Did you guys move? Uh, we moved a while ago. Yeah, right. Well, I haven't yeah. seen you in a while, so yeah. <laughs> no, no, it, it's. Um, I mean, for me, it's a, almost like a shrine. It's like a sacred place. What the Vanguard? Yeah, so much uh, music has been going on down there. Oh, we're gonna get a treat! <laughs> Yay! What's up, yo? It's not gonna do uh, English. Do you speak at all? He speaks. I guess. Hey. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, Aw, that's so cute. There's so much. Uh, yeah, just you know, the history of of music has been everything that's been going on down there for so long. Is yeah. The place is the same. The thing I was playing with promotion down there in 2004, I think. Holy shit. So like 20 years ago, man. When or I came 15 back 15 years ago. Yeah. yeah. When I came back in 2020, it was like it was like man, this is like a pocket of time. I've I everything was the same. Yeah. I felt like, okay, I'm and I looked myself in the mirror and I was like, man, you're not the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a a pocket of time. It it's like frozen in time is what you yeah. mean, right? Like you go to the Village Vanguard in Manhattan, in the West Village, in New York, and you're yeah. like, oh yeah, this hasn't really changed in yeah. 50, 60 years. And and also then you're going there, Jakob, as a leader and not yeah. as a sideman. Yeah. So, so it's precision. your band. He uh, uh, he likes the, he likes the uh, hand thing gestures. All right, right. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it was special. I said you shouldn't touch the computer. Uh, um, yeah, it's very special. And 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 the you know the ghosts. Everybody are talking about the ghosts in the in the club. Right. You know, and it definitely feels like yeah, they're. It doesn't feel like they are sort of uh, against you. It feels like they're cheering for you somehow did, do you did i ever tell you my paul motion story after he passed away after he died no. oh yeah you did but can i tell me. it can i tell Sorry. it on camera yeah do it so when our drummer friend paul motion died i went to the vanguard and i believe that it came to me all right so people can call me crazy but i believe that it came to me and he said would you please tell lorraine Thank you for the love. And Lorraine is one of the owners uh, of the Vanguard. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm not telling Lorraine that. She's going to fucking yell at me. I'm trying to get a gig here, Paul. I'm not trying to. And he goes, just tell her, thank you for the love. And anyway, I couldn't do it. Okay. Because, well, because that sounds crazy. Paul Motion shows up in a dream and tells me to tell oh. Lorraine when I'm watching the bad plus at the Vanguard, hey, thanks for the love. Yeah. And anyway, so she says, well, talk to Dave Douglas's wife, Susanna. I really like her and she can do it. Okay. So I talked to Susanna, Dave Douglas's, the trumpet player's wife. And she says, okay, I'll tell Lorraine for you. And then Paul says, Again, this is freaking me out because he really did come to me. He said, tell Suzanne I'll give her a signal when to do it. I'm going to flick the lights off and on. Okay. So then about 1 a.m., maybe midnight, one night, Susanna, Dave Douglas's wife, Susanna, texts me, the lights are flickering. I was like, all right, this is when you're supposed to tell Lorraine. Wow. I know it sounds insane, right? I'm going to like sound like a kook here, but whatever. <laughs> What's he what's he do then? Uh she she didn't bring me into it. She just said, I'm sure Paul loves you and misses you. Yeah. Like we we couldn't go there. I mean, like, dude, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, totally. I, I don't even know if I can like put this on the show. Like, I mean, but I swear <laughs> to you. And Susanna at one in the morning is texting me. Actually, it might have been like two in the morning. She goes, we're at the Vanguard and the lights are flickering. And am I supposed to tell Lorraine now that Paul is here? I was like, yeah. What? <laughs> what? Why are you laughing at me? I mean, I, I, that's what I mean. Like, I can't tell this shit. What? I mean, what do I know? I think it's uh, if Paul had that wish, it's also sort of too bad that Lorraine didn't <laughs> get the news. Yeah, I know, but you know, we know how she is, right? Yeah. She probably knows. Wow. I'm sure. Right. That would. Right. Uh, do you want to say goodbye? Do you want to take us out? Skal du se harbra? He can clap and wink. Can you wink? Can you see the wink? Hi. 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 Oh, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Jakob Bro. And thank you, Jakob, for taking your time to be here. Thank you. Thank I love you. you, man. I miss you. I oh, my God. I miss you so much. And well, uh, well, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's meet after Corona. <laughs> <laughs> There's your podcast. Let's meet after Corona, man. Exactly. <laughs> all right, brother. Take care of yourself, all right? I Take love care. you. All right, Good peace. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of Constant Constants. Tune in every week for new conversations. And if you want even more, check out Andrew's Patreon for more exclusive content and additional conversations. Hosted and produced by Andrew D'Angelo. Edited and mixed by Lucy Little. Original music by Andrew D'Angelo and Maximilian Moore D'Angelo. Intro is Henrietta Weeks. Thanks so much. See you next time. You Sounds fucking beautiful. yeah, you fucking rocked it. Like you she doesn't it. she doesn't know she says podcast, right? <laughs> like she doesn't even